Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we've got the return today of one of your favourite constructors and mine, Jovial. Uh, Jovial's come up with this uh, arrow sandwich puzzle, which has been heavily recommended by our Discord server for us. Um, so I'm looking forward to giving this try giving us a try in a moment. I have no clue, by the way, on how difficult this one is. Jovial's puzzles are normally approachable. Um, she's often kind like that. So hopefully, hopefully we'll be good to go. Um, right, before we kick off, what do I want to mention? Firstly, firstly, and most importantly, if you have not watched yesterday's video, which was titled The Funniest Sudoku of All Time, check it out. Uh, it really is worthwhile. It is, um, Faluta's puzzle is, is comedy personified and wit personified and it is it, it, it's just a staggering a staggering thing so check out the video i'll try and remember to put a card on the screen um next um please do keep trying to get us up towards 400,000 subs we're, we're not that far away in percentage terms we're really not very far away we are a few thousand short so if you do watch the channel and you're not subscribed but you do enjoy it please think about subscribing and helping us to inch towards that total we'd be most grateful and we're going to be doing a special video if and when we get there where we answer community questions we've already had a lot of questions but if you have a question you'd like you'd like to direct at mark or me or both of us then send it in to cracking the cryptic at gmail.com um, now the other thing we need to do soon is to um, uh, draw the winner of um, grockle's heat uh, heat wave um, our patron reward for August uh, now we're going to do that in the next day or so so um, look out for news of who's won the merch and we'll also be coming with news of what we've got in store for you for September's reward um, which we are working on as we speak um, uh, anything else to mention oh yeah tomorrow night tomorrow night 10 p.m don't miss it I'm going to be playing the witness again I'm really looking forward to that um, I don't want to live stream too often because I don't want to sort of overload people but it's it's quite hard for me to put a game to one side and then leave it for a few days before coming back to it because I just I, I want to see what happens next um, so yeah as I say uh, tomorrow evening is is the night um, right let's get on with Jovial's puzzle what are the rules we have got um, normal Sudoku rules apply good cells along arrows must sum to the digit in the attached circle so that sounds like normal arrow rules that means that whatever you put in those three cells there you add them up and you put that digit in the circle. Um, clues outside the grid indicate the sum of digits sandwiched between the one and the nine in that row or column. So we saw this for the first time in a long time, for me at least, in the Star Wars um, uh, tribute that I did a couple of days ago. Um, and I noted at the time that Sandwich Sudoku has um, not been making an appearance in my puzzles. Well, that's being put right. So how does this work? Let's look at the 32 clue here. What this is telling us is that we, we firstly have the job of locating the one and the nine in the column. Let us say that this is a one and this is a nine. Now we would be saying that these digits here, the digits sandwiched between the one and the nine have to sum up to 32. And the eagle-eyed among you will realize that's impossible. So I'm gonna move that down there. So these digits would have to sum to 32 in order to make that work. Um, so that's all there is to sandwich Sudoku and all there is to arrow Sudoku do have a go the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual now I get to play I've been looking forward to this let's get cracking um, and how shall we get cracking I'm tempted to start with these huge sandwich clues because I was just thinking about those when I was doing the example Let, let's start there in fact so now actually this is an opportunity to let you in on the secret as well the secret is of course that any complete column, any complete row, and any complete box of a Sudoku will contain all of the digits 1 to 9, and therefore add up to 45, because that's what those digits sum to. And this is incredibly important in Sandwich Sudoku, because let's think about the nature of a 33 clue. Um, what we're going to have is a 1 and a 9 somewhere. Let's put the 1 and the 9 in. We don't know where they go, but let's just do this for illustration. Then we're going to have cells summing to 33 between the 1 and the 9. Add the 1 and the 9 to 33, we get 43. But we know the whole column adds to 45. So that means there are cells summing to 2 outside the sandwich. Well, 
that we can't make two cells sum to two in one column of the Sudoku because you can't put two ones in a column. So what we actually know immediately in this column is that there is a two in one of those positions. And there must be, and all of these squares cannot be ones and nines. And this is the big tip for Sandwich Sudoku. Label the cells that cannot be ones and nines, and sometimes that helps you. Now, I'm going to do this again for the 32 clue, because the 32 clue is identical, or all but all identical, to the 33 clue. Because if we think about this column, wherever the 1 and the 9 go, and the 32 in between them, that's 42, we know there are cells summing to 3 outside the sandwich. But given that 1 is in the sandwich crust, there's no way of making a total of 3 uh, without it just being a single 3, because we can't. what we can't do is put 1 and 2 outside the sandwich, because if we try and do that, let me show you what I mean, if we went 1 and 9 and then said, ah, well, we need three outside the sandwich, so we'll go one, two pair like that. You can see why that's a problem. We're going to end up with two ones in the column. So again, we've got an identical disposition in column two, which is a bit suspicious, isn't it? Um, so what does that mean? That means that the one and the nine in box four now have to be in those squares. That can't be a one because it's on an arrow. Um, ah, yeah, this is interesting. Look, this nine here is looking at this circle and this circle is a three cell arrow. Now a three cell arrow where all of the digits have to be different, what would be the minimum sum of these three squares? It would be a one, a two and a three. So this square is at least six but it can't be nine. So that's a six, seven or an eight. And we know something about the digits or a sum to six, seven and eight in three cells. If you can't repeat a digit, there's always a one in the sum. So now one, now one is in one of those two cells. I've got to be a bit careful with my pencil marking now. Um, one is in one of these cells. Yes, we can't. Here's something interesting. You can't put a nine in either of these cells, because if you made this a one nine pair, although that looks fine, there's no sandwich clue in row one. We know. Oh, hang on. Am I going crazy? Actually. I was about to say something that was absolutely wrong. I was about to say, ah, oh, no, I can actually say it, but not for the reason I thought I could say it. No, this cannot be a 1-9 pair. Let me show you why. If that's a 1-9 pair, we know that the 33 and the 32 have to be sort of six cells in the sandwich, if you like. Then a 1-9 pair here, and then the 2 and the 3 outside. And that looks like it works at first blush. But what I've now noticed is that that 19 clue is broken because we need 19 between the one and the nine in row eight, not zero. So this doesn't work. This does not work. And that might be important. Oh, I've lost all my pencil marks now, bobbins. Um, it means there's a nine in one of those two squares, which might be important. Let me just think about this now. So we now, we've got a one in one of these, a nine in one of these. That's just, by the way, the reason that the nine's in one of these, of course, is that we've got a nine here, no nine here. We worked out there's no nine here, so the nine must be in this domino. Yeah, okay, and now whichever one of these is a nine, it's going to have to have a one in one of those two squares. And whichever one of these is a one is going to have to have a nine in one of these two squares. So we're going to have a sort of diagonal arrangement of ones and nines in these two by two boxes. And I'm a bit interested in the 12 clue going across here. Yeah. 
yes, okay, this is lovely. This is absolutely lovely. So the question we should ask is, is it possible for this to be a nine? And the answer is no, because if this is a nine, how are we gonna make a 12 sandwich clue? Well, this square here is the sum of those three squares. None of these squares can include a one because our one in box four is in one of those two squares, our one in box one is in one of these two squares. So the minimum we could put on this would be a two and a three there and a two there. Well, that's seven, but seven and six is already more than 12. So we cannot put the nine here. This is great. So we, now we've got to put the nine there. And I'm just wondering, because I can see I can't put a one on here. This is absolutely beautiful. Right, right, I can see what Jovial's done here as well. This is really, really beautiful. So what I was hoping to conclude, and I think I can conclude, is that this nine arrow, because it can't contain a one, is a two, three, four string, because I know that two, three, and four add to nine. But the fly in that ointment is, could there be a repeated digit on this arrow? Because obviously this square could be the same as that square in theory. Well, let's, let's think about that. In order for this to work, what digits would be available to make nine if we repeat a digit in these two squares? We know this repeated digit is not a one because the ones are impossible to place in either of those squares. Could we have a repeated two? The answer is no, because there's definitely a two in one of those squares in column one. Could we have a repeated three? The answer is no, because there's a three in one of these squares ruling a three out from this square. My phone is buzzing. So. Could we have a repeated four? Well, absolutely not, because then this square would need to be a one, which it can't be. So there is no repeated digit on the nine arrow, and therefore it is two, three, and four. And we know that those are not three, because we know there's a three in one of these two squares. So now we know that this is a three. Yeah, okay, and once we know that this is the nine, the other thing we know is that this is the outy cell in column two, don't we? We can place the one here. This is now a three. Now we place the nine here by the same token. This is a two, and that's a one. Bingo, and we are off to the races. Um, and we've still got the question of how we make the 12 clue work, because we've got to do that. And we've got quite a high digit here. And the evenness of 12 looks a bit suspicious, doesn't it? Six. Yeah, okay. So we can, you can immediately rule out six here. Because six is going to put one, two, and three on the arrow. And the highest total we could get to would be a six, two, and a three, which only add to 11. So that's not six. If this is seven and it's one, two, four, that's also a problem because the highest total we can get to that time is a two and a four plus a seven, which is 13, but there's no way of reducing that total by one. So that doesn't work either. This is an eight. And now I need to have two cells summing to, oh, I could either have a four here and then a one and then a three, that would work. Two, one, four. And that's in fact that is that's the only way of doing it because remember that an eight arrow is either one two five well let's think about that for a moment if this was one two and five on in these three squares we'd need two so two of those cells to add up to four and the other square to be a one that's clearly impossible if it's one three four we've got the same problem uh, we we need one or two cells to add up to four and we can only use the one in the sandwich crust. So we've got to just use the four on its own. So this is four, this is one, this is three. And we are still going with some sort of efficiency, I feel. Um, now, what do we do next? I feel like I must be able to resolve this two four pair, but I can't see how to do it. So we've now used column one sandwich clue. We've used column two sandwich clue. We've used row two sandwich clue. 
we've got some short stubby arrows here and here which I refuse to use on matter of principle they are ah, hang on this square is a six seven or an eight because it can't be a nine so there's a one on this arrow which is not there so I'm tempted to look at row eight here but let me just let me just think about whether there's anything else we can do here 26 as a sandwich clue is high enough that the central square can never be a one or a nine um, and you can see I mean perhaps the easiest way to see that is to try and, and put this let's try and make this a one then the biggest number of cells we can include in our sandwich is three we could put the nine as far away as this but a three cell sandwich with when you don't have a nine available eight seven and six would be the biggest digits I could put in those three squares eight seven and six only add to not 21 so this is not a one or a nine um, in fact that we've got nines yeah okay we've got nines and ones here and here so we can green out those squares as well now does that mean anything useful um, don't know there's a one in one of those three squares and a one in one of these three squares Yeah, okay. So let's ask the question, where does one go in column nine? And the answer I think is in one of four positions, but whichever one of these four positions takes the one, the nine in the column is always gonna to have to be in one of those two squares, I think, because we know a 26 clue is at least a four cell sandwich. And we, we're not allowed to access those squares. So one, two, three, four. I can't use this one. I'm always going to hit the edge. So there is a nine in one of those two squares. I don't have a good way of. Don't really have a good way of representing that. I'm just going to colour those in because if I put nines in those corners, I'll forget what that means. Um, there's a nine in one of these two cells. I don't know. No, maybe it, so maybe we've got to come back to row eight. Sorry if this is a bit of a digression. Let us think about row eight. What do we know about this? We can do uh, well, yes, okay, we can place the one, of course. It's a 19 sandwich, so 19 is at least three cells, so this can't add up to 19, so that can't be a one. So this is a one. One lives in one of those three squares. Now, I'm not sure whether we're better working on these adding up to 19 or these adding up to, what's it going to be, 16, yeah. So, because of the secret, of course. So if they add up to 19, plus 1 plus 9 is 29. The whole row adds up to 45. So these add up to 16. Oh, beautiful. This is nice. This is a nice trick. If you put 6 here, it's broken. Why is it broken? Well, because these three squares have to add to 16. So if this is a six, these squares adding up to 10, which means they need to use a one, two, three, or a four, six pair. Well, the four, six pair is gone, and you're gonna to have to put one, two, three on the six arrow. So there's no way of making that total work. So this is not six. Um, now, if it's seven, these two squares have to add up to nine without using one eight or two seven so they'd either be three six or f ah they come before five because it's right let's do this slowly if this is seven we know this is a two four pair so what options are left here to add up to nine not one eight not two seven not four five three and six might work you can't put three on a three cell arrow because you can't put one in every single cell on the arrow so that would be a six that would be a three seven six three this would be five eight pair hmm. okay that might work not sure 
I can't see why that's wrong. Uh, if this is 8, on the other hand, if this is 8, I need these to add up to 8 without using 1, 7. So these two squares are either going to be 2, 6 or 3, 5. But surely I'm going to use up some of the options for those in these two squares. This gets quite complicated, I think. Um, 7. Ah, got it. I've got it. This is, no, it's not too complicated once you realise that... <laughs> Once you realise that if you deduct 1 from the total 8, you get 7. Yeah, if this is 8, what do those two cells sum to? 7. If they sum to 7, how do we make these squares add up to 19? Well, this domino here is going to have to add up to 12 without using 3, 9 and without using 4, 8. So that's a 5, 7 pair, which means the only way of these two squares adding up to, um, to 8 without using 5, 3, and without using 1, 7 is 6, 2. Well, we can't put 2 here, so this square is a 2 or a 3, and this square is always a 6. And this square, we don't know what it is yet. Now, so this is adding up to, this arrow is adding up to 6. Which Obviously, it could be 1, 2, and 3. What I'm thinking about is, could it be something like... Oh, no, okay. The, yeah, the repeated digit is... If there's a repeated digit on this arrow, it's this square and this square that are repeating. But we know that this can't be a 1 because it's green. <laughs> so this is not a 1. So the repeated digit can't be a 2. Because if these were both 2, then that square is also a 2, and you've repeated 2. And it obviously can't be higher than 2, so there is no repeated digit on the 6 arrow, and it's 1, 2, and 3. And that's not a 1. And it's not a 3. So this is a 2. This is lovely, isn't it? Um, okay, so this is a 1, 3 pair now. Oh, and this is resolved, because now that's become a 3, which means that's a 1, that's a 3. We can get rid of the 1s from those squares. Get rid of the one from this square. Uh, this now needs to be a 7 to make sure these squares add up to 16. This is a 2-4 pair, which we can fill in. This is a 5-8 pair, which we can fill in. And row 8 is suddenly done. One of these two squares is an 8. Um, one of those two squares is a 5. One of, oh, we can place 5 in the inbox 4. It's got to go there. I give some one of three cells in box six. Um, now, can we keep this going? That's the question. What do we need to complete column two? We need sixes and seven. Oh, we know virtually nothing about sixes and sevens. Do we know about the nine in this column? We know that this square is not a 1 now. Oh, maybe the 7 clue. Oh, good grief. Right, yeah, sorry. The 7 clue is, is, is virtually a give, given now because we've got a 1 here. So we can't put 9 here because 6 does not equal 7. There's a knowledge bomb for you from cracking the cryptic. So the 7 total has to be vertical. We've already got 3 in the, t in the sum, so it's going to have to be 4, 9. That, there's no other way that will work. Um, now, what does that mean? So that means, I'm just trying to work out what I think that means. I'm sure it means something important. Those two squares have to add up to three now. Where does one go in row five? That's an interesting question. It can't be in a circle. It can't be here by Sudoku. So I think it can only be there. Uh, 
Oh, now there are four threes looking at box three. One, two, three, four. So we can always place the digit. We get the three, we get the one. We get a one in one of these squares. Now this one is going to push the nine. We obviously, to make the 26 sandwich now, can't have a nine there. So the nine is living at the bottom of the grid. Oh, this is lovely as well. Look, we've got used one, two, three in the column. What does this domino add up to? It, add up, it adds up to nine because 26 plus one plus nine is 36. The column adds up to 45. So this is adding up to nine. It's got to be four, five. There's a four here. So that's four, that's five. That's five by Sudoku. This is one, this is one. We're almost cooking with gas. Uh, we need sixes, sevens and eights into those three squares. Um, which means this is a six, seven or an eight, doesn't it? Okay, so now we should ask where nine goes in this row, because it definitely can't go on an arrow, because then the circle would have to be at least 10. So nine goes there, and that's an eight now, because we've got a one on the arrow. Um, now this has got to be a six or a seven, that means this is an eight. Now this has got to be a one or a two to make the total work. Well, it's definitely not there for a three. It must be a two, that must be a six, that must be a seven, that must be a six. This is not a six anymore. Let's get rid of some eights up there. Six, seven, so this is eight. This is almost going too well now. Uh, my spider senses and my natural pessimism uh, are sort of shrieking to me. You've almost certainly made an error. This, this, things don't normally go this smoothly. Fours, sevens, and nines. So that's a four in box five. That's a nine, and that's a seven, and that's a seven, and that's a six. And we've got to put eight in that row. And these two squares have got to be two and six to complete them. And we can do that. This is bizarre. Um, there's a six in one of these two squares. This column needs fours, fives, and sevens, look. So that's that's a single, that's a seven, that's a five, and that's a four. Now those two squares have got to be six and something, four. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Four goes here, six goes here. These two squares have got to be seven and three. Okay, that's the first little hiccup we've had for ages. Uh, those squares have got to be 2, 4 and 5. There's a 5 here, good grief. 5, 2, 4, it all goes in. That means that's a 2. These squares at the top have got to be 6s and 9s, which we can still do and it's not breaking yet. Those two squares therefore are 7 and 8. Okay, we don't know about that. Um, so what have we not actually? I think we've done all the we've done all the complexity. This should just be Sudoku from now on. Um, let's see if I can do that. Uh, five and nine into this square. Five or eight into this square. Yeah, this is where it's going to get slower, isn't it? <laughs> uh, this column we need three, six, seven, and nine. Ah, oh, that's this is a naked single. Sees three, six, and nine. So that oh, that's a seven. So that's an eight, and that's a seven which means this square here should be a five. And these squares here have got to be six, eight, and nine. Oh, okay, so that doesn't seem to be quite resolved. We can get rid of nine and eight from those two squares. Let's look down this column. We need threes, sixes, and nines. So this is three or nine, and that's three or six. Um, and this column, we need six seven and eight ah so it's that one that's a seven that's a seven that's a three that's a nine that's a five that's an eight therefore these should be that should be a three that should be a six that's eight that's nine that's six yes <laughs> lovely absolutely lovely puzzle everything today was fairly well signaled um, but signalled in a way that's just elegance. Uh, this is something that Jovial is just brilliant at. Um, so these two clues, the 33 and the 32, they really do stand out as being, whoa, there should be something going on. And once you work out that the one and the nine have to be in these squares in box four, 
you can do so much work by just thinking about how this sort of affects the geometry of box one that it actually allows you to make progress. And I absolutely loved the fact that this arrow here, you can show it has to be a do a two, three, four arrow because it can't have a repeated digit because the outies are gonna be two in this column and three in this column and they're pinching this arrow in a very, very peculiar way. So it's a gorgeous puzzle, it's a gorgeous puzzle. Let me know how you got on with it in the comments. I do enjoy reading them, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.